pretty much no way to overemphasize the importance of wall ties being properly installed on the side of a home. Um, I've known bricklayers in the past who've made statements like, I don't get paid for nailing on wall ties, I get paid for laying brick. Very bad attitude. Corrugated wall ties should be 22 gauge galvanized steel, minimum, according to the code. And they must be nailed on with at least an eight penny nail, and that's not always common practice, as you know. Wall tie spacing is um, residentially, as far as the code is concerned. You must have one tie about every two and two thirds square foot. So, masons and builders, with a modular brick, you would have six courses in 16 inches vertically. So if every sixth course you would have your masons nail on a course of wall ties on each stud, that would even surpass what the code calls for. So uh, that would be a, a nice rule of thumb to go by. But uh, as far as proper installation of wall ties are concerned, they must be nailed on also in one particular way. With corrugated ties, there are a couple of holes in each end of that tie. But the code mentions that you would not want to put the nail in the upper hole of the tie, but as close to the bend as possible. In fact, it mentions within a half inch of where the wall tie bends and comes on out onto the brick. So the slide you're looking at is the wrong way to nail on a wall tie, even though the proper nail is being used. By the way, looking at this slide, you can see the one inch airspace between the sheathing paper and the brick. This is the only time you can use a corrugated tie with a one inch airspace. Maximum one inch airspace, minimum one inch airspace. So the only time you'd see corrugated ties used is with wood stud framing. This is a job that uh, I just happened to be riding by and saw and noticed that uh, the ties were properly nailed on every 16 inches vertically as well as horizontally. Very nice installation. Code is pretty specific too about how far through the brick the tie must extend in order to do its job. What you're hoping to do is prevent in high wind situations or in seismic conditions a type of failure or pull off. So the brick has to have enough support from that tie to hold it against the wall. For it to do that it must pass at least according to the code at least halfway through the brick as you see pictured here. But it must also stop back from the face of the wall about five eighths of an inch. If not, in the future, when the galvanization breaks down on that tie, you can't have stains like this all over the side of the house. There was a, a tornado close by where I live, and it was all over the news that the, the brick failed. There was a pull off on several homes. I wanted to know why. Having mentioned already how a wall tie should be nailed on, do you see anything wrong with this picture? Notice the nail being used. A roof tack that might be an inch, inch and a quarter long. Doesn't satisfy the code and obviously it didn't do the job. This is the house next door. A plastic cap nail being used. Uh, I've always called it a simplex nail. Only again about an inch, inch and a half long at the most. Certainly not an eight penny uh, cement coated nail. Like the code calls for. This is what the side of the house looked like. It failed on all four sides. And uh, I just really can't overemphasize the need of proper wall tie spacing and getting them installed properly. And again, the only place you should see corrugated ties is with wood frame construction. So I did put in a couple, for those of you who do light commercial jobs at times, you residential builders may do some of that. Notice this is a steel stud installation and they're using both on the front and on the side, on the metal panels, corrugated ties. This is a code violation. Something else that I noticed as I was looking at this picture, perhaps you see it as well, notice all the butt joints, both vertically and horizontally, in these pieces of sheathing. How many places can water just run through the wall if it makes its way through that brick veneer? Obviously, they're not going to put any type of house wrap on this building now because the ties are already installed. It would be impossible. So this really can emphasize what we've talked about in other segments. You must have some type of house wrap, even if you have water repellent sheathing on the building, 
because there are so many places that the building can leak. I won't go into this in any detail, but just for your information, you should use some type of flexible tie system with metal studs, and this is just a few examples of what they might look like.